So Mike, you were the very first CTO for Vodafone when we launched the very first mobile network in the UK. I'm fascinated. What were the big challenges that you had to go through? We formed a company with five people and a big ambition to open a network with it in less than two years' time. Of course, at that time, no one had any real knowledge of selling the networks. Because you were first to launch, which, which was no mean task. We were as surprised as our competitor, I think, when that happened. <laughs> but we were very pleased and we managed to launch nine days ahead of them. So that was our first big success. What did people believe that they would use mobile technology for back then? At that time, it was very much a car phone industry, possibly boats or motorhomes, but certainly not put in pockets at that time. Company executives were early adopters, salesmen, transport firms. And voice services, not really data services. Only voice services to start with, although we started pioneering early data services over the analogue network almost straight away. And at the time I retired, voice was probably 98% of the traffic. SMS had grown tremendously and had pretty much killed the pager market, which before we started, pagers were a big business. You'd be amazed to know we only turned off the pager network two years ago. We had some hold on customers that never <laughs> wanted to move away, but it's, uh, it's finally been retired. It's a minor relief. At the time I retired, the network probably covered something like 98% of the population of the UK. And I think we had about 10,000 base station sites operational at that time. So that was growing a little bit from them, probably another 50 or 60% larger. Population coverage is, is a little bit above that, uh, and geographic coverage is, is starting to broaden out. Uh, of course, the technologies themselves have evolved, so we no longer run a voice-centric network, we run a very data-centric network, and that's probably the biggest change. Of course, now we're talking about 5G launching in the UK. Can I show you a video of a holographic call that we did just recently over 5G to give you a view of kind of how the technology is playing out? We had Steph Horton, who is the England football captain in Manchester, and a young fan here in our Newbury office interacting with each other. That's amazing. <laughs> Gosh, I'd never have envisaged that ever. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard from that to tell which one's the hologram, yes. but it's not immediately obvious. It's very likely just a few years from now holographic technology be a part of every device that people are using and it's how people interact in a 3D way rather than in a 2D way they interact with today. So what do you envisage the 5G world will look like in another five years? Well, a lot more speed and a lot more innovative applications, wearable technologies, internet of things and devices, connected cars, connected services, smart cities. We really see a world probably only five years from now where we have more things connected to our network than we have people using devices and smartphones to connect to services and that creates a whole set of new opportunities and applications that we really can't quite dream of today. Well, I look forward to seeing that for real. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun.